Yep, it's that easy. It's all you got to do. I wanted to show you guys how to change your front sprocket. And I realized this is a very, very, very easy thing to do. You don't need an impact gun. You can do it with any socket or wrench of any size. So this video would be very short and kind of boring. So I realized, well, why don't we talk about instead the different sizes of sprockets? Um, because that's kind of a confusing subject for a lot of people, especially people who are new into motorcycles. Um, there's different size front sprockets. There are different size rear sprockets. And which one do you need? That's the real question, right? To make it short, simple, and easy to understand, the bigger the difference between the front and the rear sprockets, the more torque you have. And torque equals acceleration, but you sacrifice top speed. The smaller the difference in size between the front and the rear sprocket, the more top speed you have, but you lose that acceleration. Different sports will change different sprockets for different reasons. For example, in hard enduro, it's more common for people to change the front sprocket simply because it's more protected. If you want to change your ratio and you need a bigger difference and you put a bigger rear sprocket on, it actually increases the size of the disc and now that disc is vulnerable to rock strikes and stuff like that. But you could simply make the front sprocket slightly smaller and it wouldn't be vulnerable to rock strikes. While in motocross, rock strikes aren't really an issue, some tracks require a lot of top speed. So what they're going to do is they're going to take their ratio and they're going to make it smaller. If they have a track that requires more acceleration and less top speed, they can just go ahead and put a really big rear sprocket on and not worry about rock strikes. Your final ratio, aka your sprocket sizes, are really your ultimate tuning for the way that your bike accelerates and its top speed. It's a balance between the two. If you want more acceleration, bigger ratio. If you want more top speed, less ratio. Obviously, you need the engine to be able to back that up though. If you're trying to make a really tight, if you're trying to make your 125 go really fast and you put a really tiny ratio on there, it might not have the power to do it. What ratio do you run? What sport are you in? This is the question I have for you. I know a lot of people change these things quite frequently just for fun. Are you a racer that changes it per race? I'd be very curious and interested to find out. Go ahead and let me know. I'm definitely going to read the comments as I always do. And uh, thanks for watching. Also, if you made it this far in the video, thank you a million times. It's really amazing to see people watching my entire video, especially my long format videos. I've really been trying to educate myself and practice my editing skills as much as I practice my writing. So hopefully these videos are not only informative, but entertaining as well. Uh, obviously I can ride a dirt bike and have fun doing that, but I really also want to be able to tell a story and help people make informed decisions on what they, what they buy, what they wear, what they do to their bikes. So if you do like this video, please uh, go ahead and, and encourage me because a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. So I know it's kind of a, a weird call to action. I'm supposed to say like and subscribe and all that stuff, but the truth of the matter is it, it, it'd be far more... Um, uh, it, it'd be far more impactful to me if you said, hey, man, the editing was really good or, hey, I really like this thing that you did with the camera in this section. So uh, thanks for watching again. I really I genuinely do appreciate you guys.